Welcome to St. John's Church. It's good to see you all here today. What a wonderful way to begin worship with the sound of bells. It has been this way with not just Christians, but with all religions practically on the face of the earth, that they like bells involved. Sometimes the bells are used to call the people into the church, and other times the bells are rung in the church to signal certain things going on. And other times it's just there for the pleasure of listening to them. And our young people do such a good job. Now we stand for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We kneel or sit. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our second reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Love it if my young friends would join me up front. Come on up. Then you can sit on this side. You guys can come over a little bit. Thank you. All right. So, today's gospel story talked about a commandment, something that God and Jesus wants us to do. Now, last year at VBS, we learned about a guy named Moses, and he gave us some commandments too. Do you remember how many? How many did Moses give us? Do you want some help? Say it louder. Ten. Ten commandments, that's right. Jesus, in our gospel story today, gave us one more. So there's 11 now that we have to remember. And the 11th one is really important, the one Jesus gave us. He said we need to love one another. Love one another. So what does that mean? Hmm, let's think about that. If we have to love one another, does that mean we have to love everybody? 
Yes. It does. Everybody. So if someone isn't nice to us, we still have to love them? Yeah. If someone's poor, do we have to love them? If they are in this room right now, do we have to love them? Yes. If they're our neighbor next door? Yes. yes. We have to love everybody. That's what Jesus commands us to do. Even if it's hard, we still have to do it. We have to love everybody. All right, so on the count of three, we're going to shout, love everybody. Ready? One, two, three. Love everybody. And that's what we need to remember. Every single day, no matter what happens to us, Jesus commanded us to love everybody. All right, you guys can head back to your seat. The text for today is John 13, 31 to 35. This text this morning is addressed to the whole Christian family, not just the disciples. Jesus was anticipating going to the cross, and there he would glorify God by his perfect obedience even unto death. That sentence used to be put to music and sung as the Lenten sentence uh, years and years ago when I was a kid. That was the way it was in the hymnal. Here he called the disciples to perfect obedience as well. That means you and I are supposed to be perfect too. Perfect obedience consists in loving one another. If you do that, you don't need to worry about anything else. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. He says, even as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So the first point of the text is so obvious that we may take it for granted or maybe even miss it altogether. A new commandment I give you, says Jesus. Not a recommendation or a piece of advice, but a commandment, an order. So the question that immediately arises in my mind is, well, why on earth should such a thing have to be commanded? Why not just let it happen? And the answer, of course, is because love frequently is forced to take second place to anger, resentment, and revenge. Those forces are extremely strong and must be faced up to and recognized and worked against. So many people are like a woman who came to Ibn Saud, the man who ruled Saudi Arabia from 1932 to 1953. She came demanding justice. She came to demand the death of the man who had killed her husband. The man she wanted executed had been up in the top of a palm tree picking dates when he lost his balance and fell. The woman's husband just happened to be walking by at the wrong time, and the date picker landed on top of the pedestrian and survived. But the pedestrian, her husband, was killed. King Saud tried to persuade the widow not to pursue her desire for revenge because the death had been caused by an accident. But the woman persisted. And finally, the king said, it is your right to ask for this man's life, but it is my right to decree just how he shall die. You shall take this man with you right now, 
and he shall be tied to the foot of the palm tree. Then you yourself shall climb to the top of that tree and cast yourself down upon him from that height. In that way, you will take his life as he took your husband. The woman quickly learned that revenge is not always a wonderful thing to experience. It is a dangerous dynamic and quickly changed her mind and got out of there as fast as she could. Holding grudges, nursing resentments, making sure that others get their, permis per get their punishment, everything that they deserve, but kind of heading into the shadows when the fault is yours. These forces so frequently eclipse love. So love must be commanded. The second point in the text is that love is the primary way that Christians witness in the world. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another, verse 35. I want to challenge the notion that love is only demonstrated through passionate or dramatic action. I told all the couples that came to me at St. Andrews for premarital interviews that if you wait for some dramatic event like snatching your wife out of the path of an oncoming bus that she doesn't see to communicate your love, you may wait a whole lifetime and it may never even happen at all. So we must look for less dramatic and more mundane ways to communicate love. That is why in the Christian community it is so important simply to greet one another before or after the service and express good wishes. That simple act may be your only chance to express love for a fellow Christian, and it is particularly important that we exchange such greetings with people we do not know, whether they are members or not. Doesn't make any difference. That is the first and most important way that we are to witness to one another and build one another up in the process. Love is our primary witness to the world, and the world is wherever you happen to be. The third point of the text is that our ability to love is derived from our relationship with Christ. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. We love because he first loved us. It is so important to understand this. Love does not happen in a vacuum. And it usually doesn't happen in a generic form. Love is something that is passed from one person to another. A child who does not receive love will not be able to give love. There will always be a void there. Read Steinbeck's East of Eden or watch the movie on TV to see what deprivation of love does to an individual. It cripples them. That's why mothers and fathers are so important in an individual's life. If a child receives the proper amount of nurturing love as an infant and as a toddler, they will have a sense of security and trust that will last them all their lives. Parents cooing and stroking tiny infants in the intensive care units of our regional hospitals are not just being sentimental. They are passing on to their children the power of love necessary for survival. At St. Andrews years ago, one of our families had a set of twins prematurely born, each of them weighed about a pound, not much more, a pound and a quarter, something like that. 
and they were both an incubator. I had to baptize them with an eyedropper because nobody thought that they would live. But the mother and father went into that ICU and with a single finger to stroke those little babies. And they survived. Some people are called by God to love in a big way, not to deal with tiny little premature infants, but with lots of people at the same time. One such person was Gladys Aylward. Does anybody in the church today recognize that name? She is a female hero. She was an English missionary to pre-World War II China. The Chinese ruler for the region where Gladys worked appointed her to be the official foot inspector for the region. Now, it sounds like an odd job, doesn't it? Foot inspector. But in pre-World War II China, that job was extremely important because for many, many years, the Chinese had bound the feet of young girls. At a very early age, the feet of girls were bound in 10-foot bandages, wrapped in such a way that all toes except the big one were pulled underneath the foot. The bandage then was wrapped around the heel so tightly that the sole was drawn as close to the heel as possible. And the result was a considerably shorter foot. Why on earth was something like that done? The reason was quite simple. It was done to keep women subservient to men. In a fight, that should break out between a man and a woman. Man with very little effort could knock the woman off her feet because her feet were so small. But some Chinese leaders began to understand that their country could never become a powerful nation in the 20th century with half of the population crippled. So they banned the practice. But old practices die slowly. We know that as well as all the prejudices and bigotries that support them. The foot inspector was necessary to ensure that the ban against the binding of girls' feet was enforced. What an awful job, traveling around inspecting people's feet. But Gladys did it willingly and joyfully because she knew that she was spreading the love of Christ by preventing people from being maimed for life. Gladys Aylward knew how to love. For her, love was down to earth and practical. It was commanded by the one who loved her, the Lord. This was her witness, a witness that changed the life of millions of young Chinese girls. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another.
Everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. You thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. You sit for the announcement. There's just a couple announcements I'd like to highlight. First one is a reminder that St. John's is doing the St. Mary's Franciscan Shelter Meals from May 30th to June 3rd. So we're still looking for a few more people to prepare the food and or transport it to St. Mary's. So if you're interested in that, please see Lynn Titus or get in contact with the church office. Also, next week is the deadline for the 150th Logo Contest. So if you are interested in putting in a submission for those who are our young artists and our young at heart artists as well, next week is the deadline on the last week of Sunday school. And the final thing, there are spaces available at Vacation Bible School for kids for our island adventure. And we also have some space for some helpers. So we, for the classes, it's three-year-olds through fifth grade and sixth grade on up is our helper. So if you're interested in doing that, there is a sign-up form for that you can find on the church website. Any other announcements? See. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace.
share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.